Hello guys and welcome to this video tutorial of AutoCAD 2018. Today I'll be showing you 10 different useful commands and tools that will make your life easier using AutoCAD. So we will start with overkill. So sometimes you, you may have your geometry and you, you will try to use the join command in order to join all of your lines and extrude your profile so your lines are apparently joined now when you try to extrude it it may fail to recognize the area or it may give you error so that's most likely because you're overwriting on top of your lines or simply because there is a gap in your profile so I will undo my join so even though that it looks like a single unit if you hover over it you can see that my line my lines are made of different segments yeah you can you can probably see it better on the bottom line so that will only give you errors. If you want to get rid of that, use the overkill command. So type overkill. Select all of your geometry and press enter. Then click on OK and it will just delete all the repeated objects. So now, as you can see, It did get rid of your extra lines, so now you can join it and you have a close and clean and clean profile. If not, if you still have problems extruding it or using Pressport, just right click, go on your go on your properties. And then at the bottom, it will tell you whether the profile is closed or not. In this case, it is closed, so it will work. So we'll go on to the next command, which is align. So some of you may may have um, rotated your two-dimensional or three-dimensional geometry without your ortho mode on. So you may have, you may have end up, ended up with something similar to this and then you may be struggling to get it, um, back straight and fully aligned. So there is a quick way to do that. If we draw a line, straight line going across, for instance, now I'm going to type in line. I'm going to use my blue selection tool because I want to select everything but the line. I'll press enter. Okay, so first you have to give a source point. So this will be my source point. I'll turn on my nearest. And I want it to align it with this line. So now I will do the same with the second point, which will be this corner. And then I want to align it also with this line. Now it's asking you for a third point, but because it's only two dimensional, I'm going to just hit enter now. And I don't want to scale the selected object, so I'm going to click on no. As you can see now, my object is fully aligned. Okay, so we'll go on to the next command, on snap. So sometimes you may not want to be turning your on snap on and off, um, selecting different ones. Sometimes. There is a there is a quicker solution. So let's say, for instance, that we want to draw an arc between 
these two lines. So I'm going to start by drawing a center start and arc. So now instead of turning them on or off or changing them in the menu, I'm going to hold shift and right click and now I can select what I want to snap on. So if I select center, it will ex exclude every on snap apart from center. Or I can for example say none. So yeah, it, it, may, it may save you sometimes. So in this case I'm going to use for instance mid, midpoint between two points. I select this point and I select this point and then it creates my midpoint between two points. Now I can just select start and end. Now it's doing my arc in, in the wrong direction. So if you hold control and keep holding it and then click on your end point, it will just reverse the direction of your arc. Okay, next command, number four, scale. So normally the classic way of doing this will be getting a scale factory. For instance, my the length of my bracket is 80 mil and I would like it to become 90 and scale everything else accordingly. Then the usual way of doing this would be, for instance, you can use a calculator integrated app. So type in CAL, then it will be the same one, the second one, calculator, quick calc. So if we want that to become net 90, so our scaling factor will be 90 over 80. So the scale factor of 1.125. I'm going, I'm going to highlight all of it. I'm going to type in scale. Now I'm going to specify this as my base point. You can choose them um, wherever you like. And now I'm going to type in my scale factor 1.125. And uh, so now the top of my bracket is 90. However, there is a shortcut. To skip the to skip the step of opening the calculator and working out your scaling factor, you can you can highlight everything again. Type in scale, select your base point, and now instead of entering your your scaling factor, click here where it says reference or type R and press enter. Now you have to specify the first point of your reference, it's going to be this endpoint and this endpoint. And now I just have to type in the new length. So if I type in 90, it will become 90. So it, it is a bit quicker to do it this way. So let's move on. Number five. We've gone through this one LTS scaling our line type scale so I've got my dashed line here for some reason it's, it's not displaying dashed so if I want to correct that I will type in LTS and scale it down so if I for example bring it down to 1 this is still not showing maybe, the, maybe give it a smaller factor um, the only problem with LTS is that it will scale every single line in your drawing. So in most cases, it will be quite handy and and quite useful. But in some other cases, you may only want to scale down this particular line. So you can go through the properties. So select the line. A shortcut to open the properties instead of using right click and clicking on properties is control one and it opens the menu for you and here where it says line type scale you can manually change it and it will only change the scale of that line so if I make it 0 0.5 so you can see it scaled only my line
but it wouldn't scale anything else. So I'll leave the default and leave it as one. Okay, and then now we'll move on to the next one. So number six, center line. You may have certain problems um, when you try to create center lines manually. Um, let's say if I draw a line going across from here, I'll use my swap my layer so you can see it better. Actually no chance to need to show you a new command match properties. So I go match properties. I can select this source object and this object and it will transfer into the same layer so you don't have to manually do it by moving it through here. Anyway what I was trying to explain is that sometimes you may not get the center the center point displaying as you want when you draw center center lines manually. So the best way of doing that is using the center mark command. So you select um, a circle and then it creates your your center mark. And the good thing is that you can you can extend them separately, but it will always keep your center regarding of the length of the line, as you can see here. Another command that is very useful is center line. So if you want to create a center line between two objects, you just type in center line. Select the two objects, and it creates a center line for you. And again, you can um, drag it as you wish. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Array Polar. So many of you have seen this one already. If I, for example, draw a line going across and then I type in Array Polar. Then if I select this object, press Enter. I select the center point of my array, press Enter. So that's the thing, it just created an array. If you want to edit it, just click on it. Um, you can change um, the number of instances, you can give it maybe 10. And as you can see now, you have 10. You can change the angles, the rows, columns, spaces, etc. It's, it's all in here. Um, if you want to, for example, if you just realize that you did something wrong and you would like to edit the source, just type in array edit. Now you select your array, click on source, select the item, click on OK. And now you can, for instance, shorten this line, which is the source line, and it will um, update all of the others. So this way it may, you, it may save you time because you won't have to delete it and redo it all again. And now here where it says edit array, at the top, at the top right, just click on save changes and it will update. Then the next one, if you want to, if you would like to trim all of all of the standard bits in any direction. You can use the extra command. 
So first you select, actually before I do that, I will explode my array. I will select all of it, type extreme. I'll do it again. You only have to select my circle, sorry. Extreme. Specify the side. So if I want to trim this side, I'll click on this side and it will trim everything on that side. Okay, so let's move on, on to the next one. The next one is blend. So let's say that you would like to add a smooth curve, a smooth curve between these these two sections. So if I type in blend, and then I select this line and this line, or even this line, it will just create a a smooth curve between the two. So I'm going to select that one instead. Now if I type in enter, AutoCAD by default will just open the the previous command that you used. So in this case, blend. There we go. This one can be very handy. Let's move on to the next one. Oops. So let's say that you, for instance, delete some geometry, delete them, um, this two. And now let's say that you draw something else. Um, after you've drawn your geometry, you actually change your mind and you you think, oh, actually, I shouldn't have got rid of those circles. I would like them back. So that means that you have to use Control Z and do to get the circles back and then redo your geometry. If you use the oops command, it will bring back the the latest, the last thing you erased. So you can see. Okay, next one, break. Let's say that you would like to break this line into different segments. So you find that under modify, in this case I'm going to use break at point. So I select my line, then specify first break point. So if I say that point, as you can see I have two different lines. Now if I want to break it again, I select the object again, select that break point, and now I have three lines. Very simple, very easy to use. So let's move on to the next one. Q select. So this command can also be very useful if you want to, if you have a very complicated drawing with many different lines and features and you would like to select something in particular. So just type in Q select. So you can select what applies to the entire drawing or you can select an area or objects. Here you can select what what object type are you after, if any type or arcs or lines or center marks. Here you can see your properties. So you can select by color, by layer, by line type. So if I select for example by layer and now the operator you can select equals, not equals, select all. I'm going to leave just equals. And if I go on value, here I can select my layer. So if I say, if I say for example, the pivot. Now when I click on OK, 
it will select all of it, but it will exclude everything else. It has not selected these two lines because they are part of a hidden lines layer. The next command, number 14, also very useful, W block. So let's say that you have um, a drawing and you would like to transfer some of that geometry into another drawing. So normally you would um, highlight all of it, hold Ctrl Shift C to copy and you will copy from this base point and then you use Ctrl V to paste it on the node drawing. There is a there is an easier way of doing that, you can just select it. Type in W block. Select the pick point. And I believe it has selected the object again. I, I will do it just in case. Now, you can choose whether you want to transfer the entire drawing or a block or just certain objects. Here you select your your name and where you would like to store your drawing, your units, then you click on OK. And it has already saved it in a new drawing. So when I open my new drawing, here it is. So that's it guys, thank you for watching, I hope um, this helps and I'll see you in the next one.